that day, the 6th of September 2012, I'm at IHK holding this little bundle of joy in my hands and I'm thinking, I never wanted kids by the way. Mm. I never wanted kids. I was too selfish. I didn't want kids. And then suddenly here's a, a little boy, my boy, and I wept and I wept and I cried and I cried and I cried and and then I realized that here's a life that now depends on me. Here's a life that exists because of me. Mm -hmm. And then I thought if you, you kill yourself and then this boy is going to grow up thinking I'm the reason that my dad did this. Yeah. For you see, in God's big picture, he sort of lined all this up in his own crazy way. He's God. Yeah. He, he's got a way of... Blessings come your way when he's, you least expect it. And so, whenever someone suggests that I apologize because I thought my son was a mistake, I, I pity them because they don't know the story. Mm. Well, now hopefully many of them will get to, yeah. to know, but... Mm -hmm. um, that young man saved my life because mm -hmm. I, I, was, I, was, I was done. I decided I'm, I'm done. And then from then on, everything changes. You're a mom, you know this. Yes, yes. Anybody who becomes a parent can't stay the same. It's impossible to stay the same. And then everything changes. And so I then end up going to work at Cork. Um, another great experience there, the, some amazing, one of the best environments to work in. It's hectic, it's brutal, it stretches you to the limit, mm -hmm. but it's very fulfilling. Okay. Um, which is why I don't think it's a, an accident that they've been voted employer of the year for I don't know how many years running. And <laughs> yes. they, they've got a really great family mm -hmm. um, and I, I enjoyed that for two years. And then I ended up doing KFM mm. um, at the, the time, breakfast the breakfast show. Mm. Yeah, so I was sitting in for Roger and then Roger needed to go away. And then they said, why don't you stay and, and do this? And so I eventually ended up doing that. I couldn't do both that and, and cork. Yeah. And mm. so I loved cork, I really did. But then it's radio, it's my life, you know. <laughs> the passion called you back. And did, 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 did. Yeah. And so I ended up um doing the breakfast at, at kfm and it was fun it's interesting that the entire time i'd been doing radio i never gotten to do breakfast mm -hmm. um but also i'd never gotten up to now actually i've never gotten the chance to do late night so i'm mm -hmm. still looking for someone to give me a slot <laughs> uh, i don't know maybe val or doreen can can give me a chance to f sit in for them mm -hmm. um but yeah so i did breakfast at kfm and then I got this amazing opportunity to lead the team at Kwese Free Sports and it was an exciting new challenge. I couldn't turn that down. So mm. I ended up doing that, though I still do radio on, on Saturdays at KFM. Yes. Uh, do a great show called VPN where you get to discuss things that really matter, not just political BS, mm. but actual solutions to our problems in this country. And you'll be amazed at the ideas that people have about what we can do to fix. Uh, all our problems, you know, leadership and governance and corruption and all of that. And mm -hmm. being able to hear the influential people in our generation mm -hmm. share what they think should be the way forward for us as a country us, yes. is something that I look forward to every Saturday. And so I've been doing That's that as well. That's something we need more of because yeah. uh, our culture is all about complaining. We are fabulous at complaining, complaining, and complaining. And begging. But and begging, yeah. but never really thinking about okay, what do we do about it? Yeah. Instead of complaining, change it. Yeah, yeah. And no, I, I like which is why. And and again, this is no secret. In in the last presidential election, I voted for General Viraro because when mm -hmm. they did the presidential debate, he was the only person at the time who came with tangible solutions that made sense about how to fix our agriculture and all of that. And I love these ideas. Me and about zero point two percent of the <laughs> Ugandans. <laughs> Own it. I, I know, right? Own no, it. Yeah. Own it. Like, you're he, he, he was too good for us. Yeah. Ben, I remember when I, I met you shortly after you'd gotten married. Yeah. And you said to me it was the first time in your life that you were truly happy. Yeah.
two can get Chocha. Top of every Monday and get 10 times bonus data bundle with Chocha Monday. Log on to www.smile.co.ug or visit any Smile outlet and top up now. Smile. Now you can. truly happy yeah and a lot of people don't never get to experience that i don't think so how did you i mean what are the things that have gotten you to that point i mean life will still have its ups and downs challenges but not many people can say they are i'm surprised you remember happy. that i remember that i'm surprised you, you remember that every day <laughs> truly happy um see if you think back to what i've just been through mm. with my money troubles and my suicidal uh, episode and then you know JJ coming to the picture and then not just Rachel but Rachel's family accepting me fully and giving us their blessing it up until that point I'd sort of had that whole thing of where you're trying to hold on to what people think about you and what are people going to say about this and about that and about that and then in that period which I was saying that it's a very good thing for everybody to be humbled. Mm. When you hit rock bottom, and then you hit rock bottom, and then you dig, mm -hmm. and then you dig and hit a rock where you literally can't go any lower, you've got absolutely nothing to lose. I remember a time when one of the, I think one of the banks that I had a loan with that I had not been able to pay, called me and said, we're going to put your, newspaper, your picture in the newspapers. And I told the guy, that's all right. Can you at least let me choose the picture that you use? <laughs> so that's funny. No, I, because it, I'm like... I, but you were accepting. You, you were like, okay. I, I had made peace with it and it was a thing of what's the worst that could happen? Mm. I'll go to jail for two years? Okay. And so I'd, I'd put myself in a frame of mind where I picked a mantra that to this day remains my personal mantra. Find peace at your level. Okay. The day you do that, there is nothing in the world that can ever faze you or shake you or do anything to you. And so when I found that, I was then able to go to sleep in peace and wake up in the morning in peace without a care or worry in the world. Regardless of whether I had absolutely no money mm -hmm. or didn't know where the next meal was coming from, I had peace where I was and I don't think I'd experienced that in my life up, up until that point and so that's why at that time I literally couldn't have been happier than I was okay yeah. okay now your journey has had you moving from one place of employment to another to another to another I'm like literally every year or every two years three every on three average years. on average every three years mm, I'm like a prostitute <laughs> A corporate prostitute. Okay. Yeah. Is it also because your nature is you're highly competitive and a, a little you look for the next challenge? A, or a little bit. Opportunities just kept coming. A little bit, yes. A little bit of both. Um, I think most of it has been because the opportunities come. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that God promised me when we were at the university back in, in 2000, God made me a promise and said, you'll never look for a job in your life. I've never looked for a job in my life. Now, for the people who don't understand what that means, what do you mean? I what get made it. you a promise? God, who made the universe, everything that you know as it now, is, how did you yeah, and, and all of that. So you receive that. We, when when we were at the university, we, we used to pray a lot. Okay. We were very, we were very spiritual, if mm -hmm. you want to call it that. Oh, we prayed, we fasted. Oh, it was it was intense. And what happens is that. It's difficult to explain to someone who hasn't experienced it before, mm -hmm. but God does speak to people, mm -hmm. to all of us. Mm -hmm. He does. Um, and he says, my sheep know my voice. So if, if you're thinking, where is this God? And you go and say, God, if you're there, talk to me. Mm -hmm. I want to know. Say something. He will. It might not be in a loud, audible voice with a megaphone, mm. but somehow he will. And if you're listening carefully with your heart and your mm -hmm. spirit and you're willing to listen mm -hmm. you will know yeah. and so it was one of those periods when we'd been going through 
a season of waiting on God, as we call it in the church, where you're, you're humbling yourself and asking God to lead and guide, uh, which I would advise for everybody. It, it has immense benefits. But a message will come through, sometimes it will be through a person, sometimes it will be through a verse that you read, sometimes you will just hear a still small voice on the inside, which will normally get confirmed by two or three people and mm. a Bible verse that you read. And there's a whole lesson about how, how it works, but yeah, it does. And promise that God made to me was you'll never look for a job in your life and from that day to date mm -hmm. I've never looked for a job in my life mm -hmm. what normally happens is that there will be an opportunity and I'll get a phone call and someone says I've been told that you might be interested in doing something like this that it might suit you would you be interested in having mm -hmm. a chat with us about it mm -hmm. and most of the time it, it's worked out Okay. Pretty well, I, th I think. You think? Not complaining. <laughs> now, as you were talking about, you know, working this place and that place, you're talking about the people who've helped you. Yeah. This person was amazing. That yeah. person was amazing. Yeah. And um, how important is networks? Because you're talking about um, this person's name now. Yeah. But now you even add the married name or yeah. this person here, but yeah. now they're living there. Yeah. So clearly you've kept track of the people who have been in your life. See, here's an interesting, interesting thing. A lot of the people that I'm talking about, and you've, I'm sure you've experienced this, mm. but a lot of the people that I'm talking about, some of them I don't get to see more than once in 10 years. But forget your degrees, forget your papers, forget whether you have a first class from God knows where. Mm. If you don't have the right relationships with people, if you don't conduct yourself properly with people, it doesn't matter if you make hundred thousand dollars a month your life is meaningless because mm. who do you share it with being able to know that you had an impact on, on someone's life or being able to know that that person had an impact on my life uh, I reset for the first time since I started working it was only last year in 2018 mm -hmm. that I got a chance to tell Christine Mawadri what she had done for me we were speaking together at a, a Rotary event and we were on, on a panel together and she, she'd never had this, you see. <laughs> and it gave me the utmost pleasure mm. being able to explain to her what she had done for my life. She didn't know. It's something with Irene. Mm. I, I worked with Irene brief, very briefly on a project that I was doing in 2015 that has a whole different story there. It went sour because of some of my mistakes. But mm. I, again, I also got an opportunity to, to help her understand that she made me who I am today. Mm. And I think it's something that she probably wouldn't understand. And I was telling a couple of young people that I'm, I'm working with at the moment. There's a couple of missionaries that I, I work with and support in terms of the things that they're doing, reaching out to some un, un, underprivileged young people. And I was telling them that the sacrifice that they're making to be able to go into a slum and try and inspire and speak into the lives of a six, seven, eight year old might not seem like a big deal to them. Mm. But if one of those kids ends up being, because uh, it's a football program that we're doing, so if one of those kids ends up being a Sadio Mane, uh, you're nodding your head like you know who that is, you don't, do you? <laughs> it's okay, we forgive you. Sadio Mane is one of the best footballers in, mm -hmm. in England right now. Yeah. He plays for football. He grew up in a village as a poor kid. He's now earning mm. uh, 190,000 pounds a week. And he goes back? He doesn't just go back. He's built a hospital in his village. He's mm. built a school in his village. And if I'm not mistaken, he gives every family in his village the equivalent of about two million shillings a month, I think. Some sort of social grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, ex okay. exactly. So, mm -hmm. But you can imagine, if one of those kids that you're helping ends up being that guy, 
no one will ever look for you. No one will ever write any stories about you. Even the guy himself might not even remember you. Mm. But that's the sort of impact you can have on people. And so in everything that you do, every opportunity that you get to have an influence on someone's life, use it properly. It might be your maid, it might be your security guard, it might be a cleaner at your office, it might be your driver, it might be the neighborhood you know, lady who sells tomatoes. Mm. But being able to do whatever you can to help make their lives better, I don't think there's anything more fulfilling than, than that in, in life. I mm. absolutely love that. We all have to pay it forward. Yeah, you do. And it's easy to do. Mm. It doesn't take a lot. No, it doesn't. A little bit of time, a little bit of effort. A little bit of your money. Mm. And, it, and, it, and you'll, change, you'll change people's lives forever. Um, you, a, a lot of your friends spend millions of shillings on, on buying things that don't really add value every weekend. We go out and, and spend 100000 on a meal. And I'm not saying don't. Please do. You've earned it. <laughs> it's your right. You've earned that money. Enjoy it to the maximum. Mm -hmm. But spare some of it and, and go change somebody's life. Yeah. Go pick an underprivileged kid that will never even know you and... and pay their tuition for, for a year. Mm -hmm. You talked about, uh, we're almost out of time, <laughs> but you talked about, um, you know, the show that you do and having young people talk about, you know, what kind of tangible solutions can we come up with? Yeah. And I think it's not only about our country, it's even in our own lives. Yeah. Um, so what would your advice be? Because I truly hate the whole complaining culture that we're in. People complain yeah. about and everything. The beg. So they, it's, it's and usually it's a combination. It's complaining the and begging. The begging is a real thing. It's a terrible thing. It, it, How can we fight that? Especially the begging. Because with the begging comes a sense of entitlement. Entitled, exactly. Which mm -hmm. then comes with, brings, leads to complaining. Mm -hmm. um, I think it goes back to my mantra. Mm -hmm. Find peace at your level. Okay. Accept where you are and who you are. If you're in a less privileged position, accept it. Mm -hmm. Don't go and try to steal government funds because you have access to them because you want to buy the same car that Crystal drives. Find peace at your level mm. because you don't need to please anybody. You don't have to please anybody. I meet people who get surprised at, for example, the car that I drive. Mm -hmm. Like you're a whole GM of a big Pan-African brand. How can you be driving such a small Toyota? I'm like, what's wrong with it? I've actually downgraded further to an even smaller, older car now. <laughs> But they don't know what you're doing with the money that would have gone into a car. See, they'll, they'll, they'll mm. never get that. But the thing is, I'm happy. My, my car has a very good radio. It's got AC that works. The shocks <laughs> are in perfect condition. And that's all that matters. Mm. And, and I do have dreams. My, my current dream, my wife will tell you my dream car changes every week. My friends will tell you that. <laughs> my dream car will change every week and then I'll end up buying an Ipsum anyway. <laughs> um, but my mm. current dream car... I can tell you, and I'm sure you'll probably find a picture and put it somewhere here, mm -hmm. is a Bentley Bentayga, which costs 225,000 pounds before mm -hmm. tax. Mm -hmm. So I do have dreams. It's well over a billion shillings. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. And I want to drive that car. Mm -hmm. um, so either I'll become a big movie star and, you know, get paid big bucks or I'll hit the jackpot and win the lottery or something. But I like to daydream about that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. I already know the plan for my house. Oh, I know we're out of time, but I've got to say this. You just reminded me. Can Ugandans please stop building ugly houses? <laughs> I know this is absolutely random, but it just got me... You know, I was thinking about my dream, so I, I have dreams. I want to build a really nice, beautiful house, you know, whenever Isn't I Isn't that just to because it. we don't want to invest in architects? We mm. just get a builder yeah, but you, and you point at some house and say, I want something like that, or I, a box. I, you, you, you Windows, go, doors. You go spend 450, 500 million shillings on a really hideous, ugly A big thing. block of concrete. What? is that about so anyway i have i have dreams i know the house i want to build i want mm. to build it in a place that's on a hill over overseeing the lake mm. but i'm in no rush to do that mm -hmm. and it's a thing where again like i said peace at my level mm. when it happens it will happen and i know it will happen because mm. i know god will make it happen towards it as well it's mm -hmm. god I, it doesn't matter what i do mm. at the end of the day it's him who gives the ability to create wealth it's him who will open the sort of doors that will lead to that place and as long as I trust that he's able to do that, 
I can enjoy my here and now. I can enjoy the moment in which I am. I can enjoy my wife and kids and friends while I walk towards that journey. Mm. Instead of sitting and grumbling and complaining and trying to outdo Krista because she drives a big car, I've got to go steal, borrow, ruin relationships so I can drive a car like that. No one cares about that. Mm. People, For the record, I drive a Toyota as well. A very good, expensive Toyota. <laughs> yeah. But it is, isn't it? <laughs> I just need to make you. it clear. <laughs> she drives a very good, expensive Toyota. <laughs> but I have to say, um, living for yourself and the people that matter to you, yeah. not for what other people no. will say, that's also important. Don't, don't, don't give a monkey's behind what people think about you. Because <laughs> it doesn't make a difference, you see. Mm -hmm. um, I was telling some people last weekend at an event where we were that when you find peace at your level, mm. the liberty that it brings you is such that if someone in your family is getting married for example mm -hmm. and you can't afford to make a contribution to that wedding i'm able to call them up and say congratulations uh, all the best i'm not able to make a contribution now mm -hmm. um but when i do get some money i'll give you my contribution it might be in two months time might be in two years time mm -hmm. but i will do that it takes away the weight off of your shoulders instead mm -hmm. of having to worry about being put in a black book by your family, or oh, he doesn't come for our events, or oh, he doesn't... You can't, you can't please everybody. Mm. You, there's no need to do that. So find peace at your level and be content with where you are and what you have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> I hope I haven't been too much. No, it was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. Oh, bless. Bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs>